Respected brothers and sisters, the topic about parenting is a very important role and responsibility, an element of amada and trust. A hadith comes to mind in which our beloved Prophet states, that every one of us is a shepherd and everyone has a flock under us and we are responsible for that flock. There is a leader of a country who is in charge and responsible for the whole country. There is different sections of the community where a person leads. For example, within the masjid there is a board of trustees who would be responsible for those that fall under the responsibility, the limit of that trust, the children, the parents, everybody. There is the role of a father within the household, the mother being one of the responsible people of the household. There is the role of a teacher for the students. Everybody has a flock under them and they are responsible for them. Coming back to our topic with this responsibility and trustment and accountability, it is a great responsibility and a great uh, amana and trustment that Allah Ta'ala has bestowed when it comes to being a parent of a child. And if you look at the Quran and the different sections where the Anbiya also looked at their children in this manner. If you look at Hazrat Yaqub, Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salatu taslim on his deathbed, Am kuntum shuhada in hadara Yaqub al maut If you look into that verse, where he is asking his children, Ma ta'buduna min ba'di, what are you going to worship after me? So the concern was whether the children are being left, those, even though they might have been adults now, but are they at a stage where the Tawheed and the belief is correct? The whole build-up of the lifetime is the nurturing, has, has it been correct? He was testing on his last parent also. The verses read by Hafiz Ahmad with regards to Luqman al-Hakim, and the advices he gave to his children, Ya Bunaya, that it's published in many articles also in the tafsir of the Quran. It is something we can't, we don't, time does not permit for us to go into the detail of every piece of advice, but it's something that every parent should read. What type of advice was given by Luqman the wise to his children? Each aspect, moral and etiquette based, has been addressed as a father. The sense of this entrustment, if we look at the nurturing of our beloved Prophet to the young and old, as Aisha mentions, small points like having the correct name, in a hadith tradition of the narrated by Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentions that many a times Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam would rectify a child's name because he deemed it inappropriate for the child to be called with such a name. There was an incident that came to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu where a father had named a child Ju'al which is a dumb beater. And the father was complaining about the child not listening to him and not being obedient. So the basic start 
even before conception of a child. If you look at the hadith, Nabi sallallahu ta'ala wasallam taught a dua when a father, when the husband is intimate with the wife. Jannibna shaytan wa jannibna shaytan ma razaqtana. And the benefit of that is the impact of shaitan does not remain on the progeny that comes afterwards. So the entrustment and the responsibility starts before even conception of a child. Let alone the responsibilities once the child comes into this world. There is a hadith that a child is born on fitra. Every newborn is born on the fitra, deen fitra. Like what happens after that? The parents will mold the child into Christianity, into Judaism, into paganism, into fire worship. That happens because of the environment. From this hadith you learn that the environment given to a child who is a blank sheet, whatever you write and inscript will get engraved on the child's heart, is impacting on the child which is born on the Nifitra. So the child has come into this world and now the responsibility starts. What we see, the challenge is growing up 20, 30 years ago was different. Growing up now is different. Topic very important and relevant, especially for the challenges facing people who want to make sure that children don't go astray, children don't uh, get lost in these modern day challenges and uh, distractions. So, what are the key characteristics that uh, are needed for that? I will say, let's stick to four points. Point one, kindness. Point two, being a good example and role model. Point three, a good environment. And point four, the supplication and dua of the elders for those that are under them. A child has a natural connection to the parents. They imitate a lot of what parents do. If the parents are harsh, aggressive in nature, the child grows aggression. The child becomes harsh. If the child is kind, compassionate, if the parent is, that kindness and compassion is relating to the child. The, the, the narration of Hazrat Sayyidina Aisha ta'ala, in which she mentions that the kindness and compassion when it enters as any aspect of life, zanabu, it beautifies it. And harshness spoils it. So it's important that affection and kindness is connected with nurturing and tarbiyah. There is our cultural method of Islam and rectification, where we term it as Darabaya Ribu, hitting and correcting and admonishing. It's cultural, it's not Islamic. If you look at the, the Sahaba that were in the nurturing of Prophet and Hazrat Anas mentions that uh, he met in the khidma and he was in the service of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi for 10 years. And he said, Ma dharadani wa ma shatamani. He never swore at me, he never hit me. He never said anything harsh to me. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam states in a hadith that don't curse your children lest you curse them at the time when supplications are being accepted and that befalls your child. What happens later? 
you start whinging and complaining and crying, oh my child, this has happened to my child. And it was the outcome of your cursing that has created that in your child. So, the aggressiveness, the aggressive nature of the family atmosphere, the household, will impact on the child. If that same Islam rectification is done in a compassionate way, okay, a child has done something wrong. You sit down with the child and make him acknowledge what was wrong. We have students in Madrasa sent to the office because they disrupted something in the class. The first thing I will do is make the child acknowledge the mistake. If the child is not acknowledging the mistake, any shouting, any punishment, any admonishment is useless. You are building on a false foundation. The child needs to understand what he or she did wrong for them to rectify that mistake. And that comes when you sit and talk with them. You make them understand and comprehend. Shouting your head off does not work. And he's in this area, he does not work at all. So kindness is a key feature when it comes to nurturing and terbiyah of a child. There is a hadith narrated with regards to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entering, entering the masjid with either Sayyidina Hassan or Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He enters, puts him on the side and starts salah. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went in sujood, Hassan or Hussein got on his back. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't want to disturb the child, so he did a long sujood. Shaddad who narrates the hadith said, I looked up to see if everything was okay. I saw the situation and I went back in sujood. Sahaba asked afterwards that uh, you did an extra long sujood today, O Prophet of Allah. And he explained what had happened. His kindness prevented him from just getting up from sajda and letting the child fall off his back. Who? Even anybody sitting here wouldn't have that level of compassion and patience. Let alone uh, with the uh, trustees would uh, sack the imam if he had his grandchild on his back here. <laughs> so we need to understand the relationship of this kind, compassionate approach and the benefits of it in the long run. Winning people over, keeping them attached to and having the likeness of Islam comes as part of this. When a child is nurtured in the environment of harshness and aggression, you are distancing them because the child is understanding as this is Islamic nurturing. You are a role model to the child. So kindness is one of the key points and features. We can go into a lot of aspects of parenting and if you look at just the list of Luqman Hakim, in each one of those verses and advices, we can talk till Fajr today and we'll be talking about levels of but I've done it so that we can cover in a short period some of these uh, four things that we have put together. Being a good role model and an example. That's very important. Like I said, that fitly and natural connection of a child with a parent makes the parent imitate. We, when you have a child growing up, the copy goes around them. We have a granddaughter, a much daughter, she's very sharp. We've got to be careful what we say in front of her. Even joking as adults, we've got to be very mindful that she doesn't pick something up. And that is the case with any child. You either understand that aspect or you choose to ignore it, but the child is picking up, watching everything. One of the 
things I have read somewhere that when you want to understand or when you're looking for a, a spouse to get married, people have written in the guidelines that uh, look at the women, elder women in the family to visualize what type of girl that girl would be. Because she would have picked up the same traits as the women in the household. So being a role model and an example is key to good nurturing and terbiya. If you are mindful of what type of environment you are providing as a child and what type of role model, if on small things the father is flipping, getting angry, using aggressive words to the mother of the child, that same type of tantrum the child will start to go up and do. The father, if he wants to say something to the mother, don't do it in front of the child. Wait for the child to not be there and then, even if it's strong words you need to have, have it in the absence of the child. You are a role model, positively or negatively, in front of the child. The mother is known as the first mother as a first. The lack of the mother is the first example of the child. Now, what do we have today? The tablet is the first madrasa. The mother doesn't want to be disturbed, so you see the child in the corner, the tablet is there. The child knows how to navigate the tablet at a very young age. A few months and the child is navigating the tablet and going, and nobody's monitoring that. That screen time that the child is being exposed to, and what the child is being exposed to, the constant music that will impact on the mindset of the child, the heart and the spirit and the spirituality, all of that is playing a role in the development and nurturing of that child. So being a good role model and example is key when it comes to parenting. A child is not born into this world just so that he can grow up willy nilly and pick his own path. No. On each stage there is responsibility. That is why. Unfortunately, somebody might say it's fortunate, but we are so material based that from a young age, we look at the child and the child's future career in every decision we make. We do not look at the nurturing of the child in any way. Why did Nabi sallallahu ta'ala say to al martha to the Arabah that in spouse is chosen for one of four reasons for her beauty, for her family lineage, for her wealth. And then the reason Allah said at the end, that one of the reasons you will look at in a spouse is not just her beauty, her family background or her wealth, you will look at how uh, religious that uh, lady is. And the reason Allah that wise was, that uh, be successful with the deen aspect and that would be the main thing because again she is going to be nurturing the child if her deen and piety is not there what type of example will she be for the child put together the, the, the good nature and kindness of the father and the right upbringing of the mother will that uniformity will come in providing our third point, which is a good environment. Many hadiths direct towards the good environment aspect. You have the hadith of the perfume seller and the nafiq al where the person who is like a blacksmith and he's got to the furnace going, the smell of the fire and the burning that will 
touch your clothing and give that smell and even sometimes damage your clothing, the impact of that marble and the impact of sitting by a perfume cellar and picking up the good fragrance on your clothing. That example is given. Why? To make us understand that analogy is to make us understand the good nurturing aspect. The hadith, that a person is on the religion of his most close friend, so he must look at who he is befriending. Why is that being said? So, the environment a child is being given is key. And we see that today. The children who have a group friend circle, parents know that they, the impact of this friend circle is good for each other. They will do tawasi bil haq and tawasi bil sabr. They will encourage each other towards good and righteous things. Then the parents have a peace of mind that this certain uh, circle is good for my child. Where the parent find out that you know, he's going in the circles of uh, drug dealers or those that will be out till late in parts of the night and we don't know where they're going to be roaming, we'll be always worried that uh, until the child comes home, where is my child? What's going to befall me? So the mahol, the environment that the child is growing up needs to be sound needs to be safe and secure. The fourth part is that the supplication of the parents. Very important. We see that in words, رَبَّنَا عَبَلَنَا مِنَ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرْوَةَ عَعْيُمْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Words of the Qur'an showing us what type of supplications we can do for our progeny. The qurrata ayun, the comfort of the eyes, the child to be the comfort of your eyes. For us, they grow up, they have a nice career, they're earning good money, that is qurrata ayun for, for some in this day and age. That good money, good car, good house, it doesn't matter whether he's not reading his salah, whether he is preparing for when he dies, no. Our priorities are changing and we forget the main priority as Muslims, as Muslim flag bearers, as nurturers, as parents. Because what happens, the mahol they have had in the house was always material based. Discussions on clothing, money, income, good food, good cars. So that mahol is what is engraved in the child from a very young age. The school selection is based on that. What happens when the exam selection comes in? Everything is career minded, material based, and that is what you make a material machine out of the child. You forget the Islamic nurturing, and that is what you are responsible for. We come back to that when we started on that you have this block of as an entrustment from Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala will, we will account to Allah Ta'ala for the rest of the land. You will see from many traditions that this is an ongoing cycle. History repeats itself. That what you will do for your children, they will do for their children and so on. You might have been the person who has made that foundation. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a narration that when you leave this world in Qatar A'mal, your A'mal and your deeds among Qatar. One of the things that continue your A'mal is waladun salih al awla pious progeny that will continue to supplicate for you, make acts of reward for you. So even for the time when you leave this world, what you, like you say, you made your bed now lie in it. That saying comes to mind that what bed you make for you in your grave is what you have done in your lifetime. We will close our eyes, but that correct nurturing in our children will be our sadaqa jariya and will be our waladun salih and ola. If we haven't made the right bed, then 
what they will do will be the means of punishment for us. May Allah Ta'ala protect us, may Allah Ta'ala guide us. This is a very vast topic that needs a lot of time and each point needs to be dwelt in. Sometimes it can be done as a course also. For parenting in Islam is a course altogether and quite a few of our scholars have developed course, courses on that with the, a PowerPoint and it's something that you need to learn and you need to refer to your scholars on what's the best course of action in a lot of things. May Allah Ta'ala guide us to what is rightest. Wa akhirudawan and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakullah wa bihamdi. Nashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natakhbirayka. Jazakallah khairan all the brothers and sisters who attended and take a benefit insha'Allah may Allah enable us to act upon that right given to us and further our study in preparatory of the Muslim as the challenges we face continue to arise and just a reminder tomorrow insha'Allah we have the junior event competition after Salat al-Maghrib and which will also be followed by the 12 months of the Khadija Sahib so all are requested to attend from Maghrib to the Isha insha'Allah Jazakallah khairan wa ahdin jazakallah